Welcome to this week's first ever Swarf and Chips remote takeover show, all about materials and education on what you are machining every day. We are, of course, celebrating the 75th anniversary of victory in Europe today. So just a few facts before we get on with the show. World War II cost, in today's money, 3.3 trillion pounds. Wow. Of course, manufacturing and engineering were integral to the war effort. But with men being out on the front line, it was mainly women over 14 years of age working on the machine tools, making the munitions, building ships and aeroplanes and farming. And Britain built a total of about 20,000 Spitfires, mainly at Castle Bromwich and Southampton, alongside over 27,000 tanks. So hopefully you can raise a glass and toast to the heroes later on today. So let's get on with the show. Do you want to learn more about the materials that you machine, where they come from? and easy ways to get those really hard, exotic materials pre-opt so you don't have to? Well, this will be an education from our proud sponsors, Interco, Special Steels and Alloys. We also take a step back in time and dive in deep into one of our best ever cycle time challenges. So welcome to this week's Walk and Chips. So I'm joined by Mark and Gio. How are you both? Very good, thanks, Linz. Blimey, you got dressed oh, yeah. quickly. <laughs> I did, yeah, very quickly. It's the editor that helped. Have uh, you, Gio, got any facts about World War II? Um, no, I haven't got any facts um, as such. But when I used to be on the road visiting companies, I used to visit a company not far from me in Coventry, Megit Aerospace, um, at, at this present time. I think it may have been Dunlop back in the day. But there's still holes in the wall from where the aeroplanes fired at the building because they were making equipment for the war. Um, and also inside of the, the factory, the floor is on a five degree angle slope. And I asked, why is it on the, this slope? And they said it was because when they were making the barrels or parts for the tanks, they used to just roll them down the floor and let gravity take them outside the building. So there's a little bit of history for you, Lindsay. Yeah, it's fascinating. What about you, Mark? I haven't really got any uh, facts as such, but uh, on a theme of what Gia's just said about uh, tanks, um, my my father, just after the war, he had an apprenticeship with uh, Vickers, a big engineering company, and he used to work a gantry lathe where he used to bore the actual um, cannons actually on the tanks that fired the um, the rockets. There you go. Very, very interesting. And of course, my surname is Vickers and the Vickers gun. So I've been doing some research into my surname as well. Anyway, well, what a week we've had. What with the podcast, the question time and our Mac tribute show, all of which the videos are on our MTD CNC website forward slash Mac. Hopefully we've been keeping you entertained. Right, Gio, I'm going to put you on the spot now. Tell us about Interco in just one minute. Oh, thanks for that, Lindsay. Well, Interco obviously are a top class supplier of steels and alloys. They're our proud sponsor um, and they pride themselves on quality, on fast delivery, high stock levels, traceability and added value to the materials they supply to their customers and of which we will find out during this show. Right, good timing, good timekeeping, Gio, I like it. Right, let's start with where materials come from. So in December last year, we had the pleasure to visit Les Priest, who is the managing director of Interco, and we produced a documentary. So here's a snippet. We melt these ingredients in a large cooking pot called a crucible. Here they are heated to approximately 1,450 degrees C until molten and then poured into large moulds to produce ingots. At this early stage, the ingot is then stamped with the all-important heat or cast number. This is for end product traceability. I'll explain a little bit more about this later. For some materials, at this stage, they need a further melting process known as vacuum arc remelt. 
This is to refine the grain structure and to ensure there are no impurities or inclusions. So, we've got an ingot. The next stage is where we need to manipulate the ingot and pre-forge it to turn it into billet. So we are basically crushing the material with a huge machine to turn it into manageable form. Yeah, Lindsay, that was a fantastic video. I mean, that, that's actually had over 18,000 views is, and it's on the MTD CNC channel. And I was away uh, filming overseas, I'm sure I was. And I, I've learned a lot about Interco and what they actually offer. Yeah, we certainly did too. And the, the full link, we'll put that below as well. Right, Gio, we are on isolation, but you did, before isolation, uh, got a nice World Cup sent to you last week, didn't you? Yes, Lindsay, I did. I've wanted one for years. It's absolutely brilliant. It's taking pride and joy with my World Cup memorabilia. And subsequently, we're going to make it into today's Cycle Time Challenge. So let's see how it was made. This is all about the Citizen Syncom M32. It's a flagship sliding head lathe. This is series four. They're actually up to series five now, but first of all, you've got some great detail on their B axis. Here, full five axis simultaneous machining. So some great, great detail. And eagle eyed amongst you would spot that this is a World Cup regular replica, if I could say that. It's actually a life-size one for Giovanni Albanese. So it's about this big, but there you go, just etching on the ODs, doing some great, great detail there, as you can see. A great, great example of what this machine can make. Now, there you go, sub-spindles coming over, parting off over to the sub-spindle. Now, it'll be working on the back end. Essentially, what it's gonna be doing there is some pocketing and some details, detailing on the OD, some etching there. So it just showcases what this machine can do. 32 mil bar in Eco Brass, so great cycle time challenge. I've given you a few clues there. The size, it's a life-size replica for Giovanni Albanese of the World Cup. And bonus point if you can guess what engineering company it's for. There you go, the Citizen Syncom M32 Type 4. Wow, um, impressive, Connie, I like it. Right, Mark, you've got some facts on this. Yeah, well, this World Cup was actually uh, made uh, by Citizen uh, uh, for Mac 2014, Pro possibly uh, a bit of a giveaway, I would have thought. But uh, And it, the demo part was actually uh, made on their M32, which is their flagship machine, but it was at the version 4. But uh, for the Cycle Time Challenge, I do know that... Uh, um, Gio's got a little bit more fact on the version four for Cycle Time Challenge and also the new five. Yes, thanks, Mark. So I have some more information that may help our viewers with the Cycle Time guess. It was programmed using Autodesk Fusion 360, and some of the machining features uh, include turning, gang milling, fifth axis surfacing, and engraving, just some of what Colin mentioned in his brilliant um, Cycle Time Challenge video. As you mentioned, Citizen are now up to the version 5. And one of the features for the version 5, the spindle motor is now upgraded so you get constant torque at all speeds. This is just one of the additional upgrades um, on the M32. But to find out more, contact Citizen. Brilliant. Thanks, Jen. So make sure you get your guesses in because we give away Swarf and Chips goodie bag every single week. Right next up, do you have any issues with lead times on your materials that may stop production? So the level of stock of specialist steels and alloys held here by Interco is quite incredible really, uh, pretty unseen in the UK and of course they export around the world. Just to give you a, a flavour of what materials are available from the company and the levels of stock you'll see here, uh, all the materials are fully traceable, the certification that goes into uh, what they do here at Interco is quite something else which you'll find out throughout the show today. But uh, to put a number on it, £14 million worth of material stock here. Now we're talking about duplexes, um, specialist steels, all top quality product. Uh, this is what we class as, you know, let's, let's call this small bar because what I'm going to show you now really is, uh, takes it to the extreme. Now this is a 635 millimeter diameter. Now this is actually H13 and this just illustrates exactly what they're capable of here uh, at Interco. Not just in obviously supply material of this size but cutting it to size and of course if you need to they can turn it from a diameter into of a, a more prismatic part as you'll see later on in the show. But if you're looking for material quickly, specialist steels and alloys, then £14 million worth of stock. Get in contact with the guys here. So Gia, why do they have to hold so much stock? 
I think it's really important that they hold the stock so it effectively the clients and the machinists um, get next day delivery. Um, without that stock, people could be waiting on their material and it could um, stop their machine tool from running. So effectively, Interco are investing in the, their clients, really, Lindsay. Yeah, definitely. Thank you, Geo. Next up, let's talk traceability. Now, Interco pride themselves on traceability, quality and certification. Every single bar that is stocked at Interco is checked to the nth degree. The testing of these bars include tensile testing, quenching and every single bar can be traced back to the mill, to the foundry, from where it was made. So Mark, why is it so important? Well, when you think traceability, let's take, uh, let's say, a jet engine. You've got critical parts in there, Lindsay, like a blisk, uh, for example. You need to know where the source of the problem lies. And if there was a problem with the material at the start, which has caused the problem with the, uh, the engine, let's say, that's why it's really important. Right, OK. So it's quite interesting because every single bar post-testing and examination then has that cast number um, and identification that is stamped um, on every single bar. And the certifications that we saw were literally like pages and pages long. It's fascinating what goes into every single bar. Um, amazing. Right. Anyway, we saw P Paul earlier. He mentioned about different varieties of bar shapes. And um, we'd never really heard personally, um, heard of sawing operations apart from sawing the bar end. Now, you may want to consider what you're about to see next. Interco not only hold millions of pounds worth of stock, they also look to add value. If you're a machine shop and you have a billet such as this, this is F51 duplex, they can actually do some pre-ops for you. On this occasion, they are using a vertical saw to remove the four sides and take the radiuses off. And if we come over here to the finished component, you can imagine this arriving in your machine shop. Typically, you would use a face mill to do this, which is obviously uh, time consuming, there's a lot of carbide consumption, but look at that finish for a saw. And what you can see here, actually the pre-hop has been done for you. So imagine this in your machine shop, ready to mill, turn, drill, you know, put grooves in. This could be for a subsea part, could be an aerospace part, but you know, it's, it's worth considering, isn't it? Get some of the pre-ops done here at Interco and you're ready to go when it arrives at your factory. Gio, how could this save end users literally a fortune? Whew. Lots of ways, really, Lindsay. I mean, the soaring and, and, and of the, the, the raw materials and, and, and putting them into like a square billet effectively means that the end user hasn't got to machine them for flat. So it's not only saving you time on the process, um, but it's also saving your costs in, in cutting tools. Um, and, and having that kind of saving is, is a big advantage, really. Yeah, definitely. Um, now, I know that because of Mac and everything uh, being postponed, Geo, I know they were going to launch four new materials to complement their already very extensive range. Have you got any more information on this? Well, that kind of really goes to, to show and highlight the, the way in which Interco are continually investing. Um, to introduce new four new materials is a massive investment with the amount of stock that Interco hold. Um, I'm not going to give away it, what materials they're introducing. Please contact Interco or watch the Mac video that we've produced. But again, another big investment from Interco Special Steels and Alloys. Yeah, OK. Uh, Mark, have you got anything more to add on it? I mean, like, I know our video was really impressive. It's really educational that we did. Um, and you learned a lot from that. Yeah, I did. But I, I think overall, Lindsay, you know, what I'd like to say about Interco, you know, what a professional outfit. You can see why they're successful. You know, the lead times, the type of stock they've got, they're all the, the higher end of uh, materials. And, uh, you know, I think when engineers, you know, need something, they need it quickly. Obviously, Interco are there, aren't they? They're just a fantastic company. Learned a lot. Yeah, yeah definitely. Gio, anything to add just before the end of the show? 
No, Lindsay, I think we've said it all. Thank you very much. And no, thank uh, I'm, you. I'm looking forward to enjoy and have a toast for, for VE Day. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I know I think something's happening later on, um, on with the BBC or anything with VE Day. So make sure you're raising a glass of wine or you're giving a clap for our heroes. Thank you for watching and keep those spindles turning.